ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله اعادنا الله منها يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اللهم اجعلنا من الفائزين في الدنيا والاخره اللهم امين My dear respected brothers in Islam <clears throat> I want you to listen to me with your hearts before you even listen to me with your ears The title of our khutbah today is the following and I'm going to tell you what this title is and you will probably find it strange that khutbah is going to be given this title The title of our khutbah today is the following Taxi ride from hell Taxi ride from hell You definitely heard me properly Taxi ride from hell That's going to be the title of our khutbah today I write I know right now many of you are just imagining what that taxi ride from hell is all about Is it a taxi driver who was evil and who attacked the female passenger that was with him the answer is no was it, was the passenger so evil that he has attacked the taxi driver the answer is no but you will come to find out what this is all about the taxi ride from hell this is something that has happened to me myself I took a taxi ride from my home to the train station and the taxi driver he was a taxi driver that picked me up more than once from my house but the previous moments and times I've never had the chance to talk to him but this day the day that I'm going to talk to you about right now was a day that I had time to talk to him it was like this day it was friday where was i going to as i said i was going to the train station where was i coming to i was going to a masjid which masjid was i going to i was coming to this masjid masjid al furqan to deliver what to deliver the khutbah and then i had some time and then this driver was driving quite seriously steadily calmly and then i had moments few moments of free time and i then i thought to myself maybe speak to this brother i said to the brother brother where are you from he said to me i'm from that country i'm not going to mention the name of that country from a muslim country and then i said to the brother brother i pray to allah that he brings peace and tranquility and calmness to your country and he looked towards me angrily and he said to me allah is the problem i told you i told you what the title was all about he said to me allah is the problem you heard me right my heart sank that was harder than any knockout punch 
that anyone could have used against me that day. He said to me, Allah is the problem. With full of his mouth, with full mouth, with confidence, with anger. I had to calm myself down and regather myself. Get myself calmed down. I was very fearful. I was like saying to myself, what will happen to you guys next? But one thing I knew was that Allah is Halim, Allah is forbearing. After I calmed down a little bit, I said to myself, I have to speak to this guy. I need to have a dialogue going on with him until I get to the train station. I said to him, why did he say this? He said, if Allah did not exist, we would not have had the problems that we have in our country. And he went on to say, he went on to say, he said, these fools, the countrymen, the place where I call a country, the people who are from that country, he said, they're so fools, he said. They have believed that there is, there is a God that exists. And because of that, they're killing one another right now, he said. He's talking to me like that. And I have to stay calm. I can't react. I have to listen to him. And I said to him, why did you come to this conclusion? He said, through education, he said. He said, I have educated myself. I am more educated than I was before. And because of that, I have come to this conclusion that Allah is the problem. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. This taxi driver, do you think that he was someone who was born in the UK? He was not. He was not born in the UK. He was born in, in that Muslim country that he came from. And one of the questions I asked him was, do your parents know that this is what you believe? He said to me, no, my parents don't know that. I haven't told them. And he said to me, on top of this, I can say to you that I have recently paid. He said, last year, my parents went to Hajj. And he said, I was the one who paid for them. He paid for the Hajj trip. As parents right now, when our children pay for our hardships, or when our children act like Muslims, the question now is, are they truly Muslims? Do they truly believe what we believe? He said, I don't want my parents to know that I am an atheist, he said. That I do not believe that Allah exists. I don't want them to know because I want them to die in peace. I don't want to make them worry about me at the end of their lives. That's why I paid for the Hajj trip, he said. And I recently visited them, he said, back home. But I do not believe that Allah exists. If this is the words that I've heard with my own ears from a grown up man who came from a Muslim country and grew up in a Muslim country and only lived in this country maybe for 10 years and feels that he became educated and abandoned his religion and his creator. What about our kids? Subhanallah, my dear brothers in Islam, I know you are in a state of shock right now. I know you're in a state of shock, but some of you can relate to this. Some of you can relate to this. How many of us truly are true Muslims? How many of us truly believe what we say that we believe? How many of us are not doing what we are doing because we just want to please our parents? How many of us 
are upon or acting like if you are upon the religion of Islam because the community is Muslim community and we don't want to be considered outsiders. In order for us to stay part of the community and be part of the community, that we're going to act as if we are just Muslims. How many of us are just like that? My dear brothers in Islam, I want to tell you the following. It's very saddening. Do you know what the so-called head of the modern atheism, Richard Dawkins, what he said in one of his books, part of, his, part of the introduction, he said the following. He said, Muslim kids, we should not call them Muslim kids. We should call Muslim kids the children of Muslim parents. <laughs> ah. This is what we are against, brothers. He said, we must not call Muslim kids Muslim kids. We should call them the children of Muslim parents because these kids are not Muslims, he said. Look how confident he was saying that. He was very confident when he wrote that down. My dear brothers in Islam, let me tell you the following. Do not feel inferior. Do not think that you are from the minority. We are not from the minority. If we look at the creation of Allah holistically, let me tell you my dear brothers in Islam and my dear sisters who will be listening to this khutbah later on. Let me tell you, the creation of Allah that submits to Allah, the creation of Allah that submits to Allah is far more than the creation of Allah that does not submit to Allah. You are not from a minority. You are from the majority. We are from the majority. We belong to the majority of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are a Muslim, when you are a believer, you are not from the minority. Be proud of that. Holistically, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you look at them, the majority of them, they submit to Allah. And I'll prove that to you right now from the Quran. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran? تُسَبِّحُ لَهُ السَّمَاوَاتُ السَّبْعُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَمَنْ فِيهِنَّ وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ حَلِيمًا غَفُورًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said The seven heavens and the earth and all that is therein glorify him there is not a single thing that does not celebrate his praise though you do not understand their praise he is most forbearing, most forgiving. Let me continue and tell you what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Ghafir. If you are planning to run away from the religion of Islam, you thinking that you are from the minority, thinking that you belong to a very small group. Hold on, brother. Stay calm. You are a member of the majority, the far majority. The majority by far you belong to them to that group. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Surah Ghafir. Ma yujadilu fi ayati Allah illa alladhina kafaru fa la yaghruruka taqallubuhum fi albilad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Surah Ghafir. It is only the disbelievers from the human being and from the jinn. The disbelievers from the human being and from the jinn only who dispute Allah's revelation, the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah has said to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to us as well, so do not be dazzled by their movements back and forth across the land, across the universe. Do you know the advancements that we see today? People being able to go up and down. Scientific advancement, technological advancement, political advancement, in terms of financial advice, all these things, you should not be deceived by all of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, لا يغرنك تقلب الذين كفروا في البلاد متاع قليل It's just a short enjoyment. Where will they go at the end? ومأواهم جهنم But their abode that they will stay in forever, the house that is waiting for them, is the hellfire. 
Life's too short. So brothers, I want you to know that you are not from the minority. You are from the majority. Be proud of your religion. Young brothers, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Do you know Fra'un? May Allah's curse be upon him. And Haman and Qarun, during the time of Fra'un, he wanted to fool the masses the same way that we are being fooled today as the masses. The powerful people always used to fool the masses. What did Fra'un say to his minister? Haman, he said to him, Ya Haman ibn li sarhan, la'alli ablughu al-asbab, asbab al-samawat, fa'attali'a ila ilahi Musa, wa inni la'adhunnuhu kathibah. I wonder, I wish if I was able to see where Fra'un today is. Where Fra'un is, where is he right now? The guy who spoke like that thousands of years ago, I only wish if I was able to see how his situation today is. You know what he said to Haman? He said to him, build me a tall building. Build me a tall building. Erect a tall building for me. For what reason? I want to go and find out this Ilah that Musa is talking about. The peasants of that day, the masses of that day, the majority of the, Mas the Masakeen, they were fooled. Allah said, وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوَّةً Dear brothers, Allah said, وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا They disbelieved and, 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 and they were hard-hearted, okay? And they refused it furiously. But Allah said, deep down, Fir'aun himself, he knew Allah existed. Do you know Richard Dawkins and people like him? They tell the masses that there's no God. They tell the masses that there's no hereafter. But deep down, deep down, subconsciously, they know what they're saying is wrong. They know that there is a creator. But they don't want to share that information with you. Fir'aun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed him. He said, وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ For what reason? ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوَّةً Because of oppression and transgression and thinking that they're higher than everybody else. That's what, that was the reason. And this is exactly what is being repeated today. as an ummah, as a community, as a Muslim community, there's no doubt we are facing an unprecedented challenges right now. When it comes to holding on to our religion, when it comes to holding on to our religion and being Muslims, and not only Muslims by mouth, but Muslims with the heart, from the heart. It's, it's, we are facing an unprecedented challenges. But let me tell you this, my brothers and sisters in Islam, it's not going to be easy. The road ahead is not easy. As parents, as children, everyone is going through these challenges. It's very difficult. And let me tell you the reality of our situation. As parents, a lot of parents are listening to me. I hope you are not absent-minded as I'm speaking to you right now. I hope you are fully listening to me, not with your ears, but with your heart. Our state is like the poet has said. متى يبلغ البنيان يوما تمامه إذا كنت تبنيه وغيرك يهدم سبحان الله very powerful words of wisdom he said متى يبلغ البنيان يوما تمامه he said when will this building ever come to a completion the house that you're trying to build or the building you're about to erect when will it ever come to a completion إذا كنت تبنيه وغيرك يهدم while you are building and others are destroying it and demolishing it. Our children, 
Our children, we are trying to build them as Muslims. But many others are trying to destroy them and demolish them. As we try to put Iman into their hearts, the enemies of Islam, the enemies of Allah, they are trying to destroy that. That's why the poet has said, This is the state that we're in right now. إِذَا كُنْتَ تَبْنِيهِ وَغَيْرُكَ يَهْدِمُ And he went, and then another line of poem. لَوْ أَلْفَ بَانٍ خَلْفَهُمْ هَادِمٌ كَفَى He said, if you had thousand builders and only one guy who was demolishing whatever they build was sufficient, فَكَيْفَ بِبَانٍ خَلْفَهُ أَلْفَ هَادِمٍ He said, what about a builder, a single builder who's trying to erect a building? And against him are a thousand demolishers. That's the state we are in. I have to give you the reality, brothers. I have to tell you the reality. I have to give you a reality check. This is the reality. But what's the great news, though? We need, we have hope. We have hope. We have hope. لا تأسوا من روح الله. Never ever give up and think, خلاص, all is lost. No, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he told us it was never a secret. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم told us at the end of times, holding on to your religion and being a Muslim is very difficult. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم told us it's going to be very difficult, guys. No one ever thinks it's going to be easy to be a Muslim. It will be hard. The Prophet told us a thousand and five hundred years ago. He said, guys, being a Muslim will definitely become hard and harder and harder. And there is a hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the following, and I'm going to tell you this, inshallah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi spoke to the companions and he said to them, Antum fi zamanin man taraka ushra dinihi halak. I want you to listen to this hadith very carefully. The Prophet Sallallahu said to the companions, your companions, my companions, you are living at a time if you were to abandon 10% of your religion, you would have been destroyed. But a time is going to come. Man ata ushra naja. But anyone who holds on to 10% of his religion will survive and make it. Wow. 10% of your religion. We need to do our best. 10% is going to be a pass rate. Look at how, how kind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Any exam that you take, anything less than 50% is failure. If the teacher says to you, 40% is the pass rate, you become excited. You say, yes, I can get 40%. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying what? At the end of times, 10% will be sufficient for you to pass. Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Holding on to the five pillars of Islam. Guys, don't let these five go. If you go, let these five go, everything's gone. The, remember the companion who came to the Prophet and said to him, Ya Rasulullah, just tell me the bare minimum. Just the bare minimum. And the Prophet told him the five daily prayers, fasting of the month of Ramadan, which is around the corner, Hajj, Zakah, just the five pillars and the Shahada thing. That's sufficient. I want you to practice that bit. And if we practice that bit, we're going to go to Jannah, inshallah ta'ala. Yes, it's not lost. All of it is not lost. And let me give you this warning, brothers. Anyone who leaves the religion of Islam, he is the loser and the religion is not the loser. Know that. If I was to walk away, ma'ad Allah, from the religion of Islam, I will be the first, the first loser and the main loser and the last loser. The religion of Islam, Allah, he will not lose anything. Allah will not lose anything if I was to leave his religion and walk away today and say to him. Let me tell you that, brothers. We are in need of the religion. The religion doesn't need us. You have to know that. Put that into your head. Islam doesn't need you and doesn't need me. And doesn't need my father. We are in need of Islam. 
That taxi driver, that poor taxi driver, may Allah guide him. I'm returning back to his religion. I'm returning back to his senses. He thought he was educated. He became educated. And he thought by leaving Islam that he was going to have a better life. Let me tell you, anybody who walks away from Islam has walked into darkness. Darkness, wallahi, pitch black. You're not going to be able to see anything. If Allah doesn't give you light, what? Wallahi, you'll never get light. You're going to walk into what? Darkness. Like the darknesses of the waves of the ocean during the night. It's so dark. If you were to take your hand out, if you just stretch out your hand, you wouldn't be able to see it how dark the depth of the ocean is going to be during the night. Allah has given us that parable and that description. So that's the darkness that the people who disbelieve are in. If you leave Islam, that's the darkness you're going to walk into. I warned you, brothers. You are free to do whatever you want to do. Do not become from the ones who will say in the hereafter. Yunadunahum alamnakum ma'akum qalu bala walakinnakum fatantum anfusakum wa tarabbastum wa rtabtum wa garratkum ul-amaniyu hatta jaa abrullah wa garrakum billahi al-gharur. You don't want to be from this group. The munafiks, those who act like Muslims. Those who act like Muslims in this life. They want to please their parents. They want to please the community. They want to please the imam. They want to please like the uncles and, and the aunties. No, do not be from those groups because in the hereafter you're going to regret. When the Muslims, the believers are going to cross, when they're about to cross the bridge and get to the other side to go to Jannah, you're going to be calling them and saying, You will say to them, guys, were we not with you guys? We used to go to the masajids like you. Why are you not waiting for us? Why do you have light and we have got no light? Because you used to act like a Muslim in this world. You can never cheat Allah. We can never cheat Allah. We can cheat the people, but we can never cheat Allah. As, they, as the Muslims are crossing the bridge, if any brother think and sister were thinking that they can just go through this life pretending like Muslims and acting like Muslims just to please their parents, remember what is waiting for you in the hereafter. When you try to cross that bridge, because you're still pretending as a Muslim, do you think you can cheat Allah? 